Hello, everybody. Happy Christmas to you and to your kin. I'm joined here by a little elf called Billy Roach. How are you doing, Billy? I'm good. Good. Thanks for the uh, compliment on on my elfish uh, elvish looks. Uh, I'm yeah. good. How are you, Tom? Uh, have you got a? You've obviously texted me. I was wearing. I was just going to check because you have asked me to wear a Christmas jumper. I know mine's probably not. Mine's uh, it's uh, it's festive. It's festive looking is the term. It's mm. not got a massive pattern or anything like that which has got like penguins or anything on but no uh yeah i, I just wanted to check after, after you made you well you texted me you haven't made me to wear one but <laughs> you have got one on for those of you listening on the podcast you'll have to look on uh youtube to find YouTube. out what we're wearing um we aren't naked for those of you who yeah. are wishing to see that but yeah i'm mm-hmm. good tom how are you how's uh how's christmas eve going for you because oh yes going on christmas eve yeah, it's uh, well, it's it's a bit better than last year when we recorded it in November, didn't we? Uh, our yeah, yeah. Chris, Christmas Eve special. So yeah, it's uh, I feel quite relaxed. The weather is disgusting and horrible, but be, it is yeah. supposed to be nice for Christmas Day. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's uh, that that comes up trumps. Um, <sighs> two minutes week, in it. Two minutes week, in, you've already you mentioned uh, two minutes in, you've already mentioned Trump as it is. I think that's a yeah. record, Tom. <laughs> Last week, I was able to tease you because it was a victory for Rouse in the Rouse Roach Derby. Yeah, but you didn't actually watch the the. I I wouldn't I wouldn't say I watched. I didn't watch. No, I didn't watch the Burnley game. It was on in the background, but I didn't sit down and watch it uh, intensively because Chelsea were playing after. So I was having my dinner um, whilst the Burnley game was on, um, and then obviously sat down at eight o'clock to watch the Chelsea game. But um, I I said to we record behind the scenes now we recorded yeah. the, the episode that's coming out on saturday yesterday so i've already spoken to you about my yeah. dad but i will mention it to our listeners because we did mention him um last week as well about adama Traore. he he obviously uh he knew who he was this time and he was able to pass comments on it on him tom and he uh, agreed with you and your uh assumptions of him being useless mm-hmm. um and all he can do is run and he even struggles to do that um, yeah, well, it was raining, wasn't it? Of course, so it was yeah. slippy, so he couldn't run. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it shows you that he is rubbish because in the summer he was linked with going to Real Madrid or Barcelona, and now he's linked to going to Leeds. No disrespect to Leeds, of course, but yeah, they're not Barcelona in comparison. Yeah. yeah, and also that lots of the Leeds fans are saying, well, he he's just not fit enough to play for Bielsa because they run non-stop and yeah. uh, Traore stops most of the game and then occasionally yeah. runs. And when he does run, he's uh, he falls over Useless. shortly after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, that's that's football ticked off. We can, uh, <laughs> we can we can move on. And I'm really I am I'm so excited about this new game that I want to just, I just want to get <laughs> it out into the open straight away. It hasn't got a jingle because it's only been created this morning. Yeah. But it's called the Ida Good Johnson game, uh, and it's fun for all the family so long as you like uh, sport. And it, I think it's, it works best with team sports, but it can be. Uh, adapted to to individual sports like uh, golf or tennis. Uh, so what you have to do is you can only use six moves. And this was a, a topic of contention earlier on. So six moves, they have to have played with a player uh, at the same club, and you have to see how far back you can get by doing that. So it's uh, well, there's, I don't think there's a game like it, Billy. I think this is brand new. This is not like play yeah. your cards right like we had recently. This is <laughs> this is unprecedented. So uh, I'll give you an example. So I used Wolves as an example, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. and I started with. You've got to start with a current player as well. You have to start with somebody who played now. So I started with Connor Cody, who played with Carla Kimi, who played with Lee Naylor who played with Steve Bull, who played with Keith Downing, who played with Peter Easto uh, in the 1984-85 season at Wolves. And he, Peter Easto was born in 1953. So that's as far back. I'm sure that there is a... You must be able to get further back with Wolves, but I just wanted to do a really quick example. Yeah. I sent it to you, Billy. Talk us through your Chelsea one. How far back did you get with uh, Chelsea? I'm just, uh, I'm just scrolling through my... WhatsApp because I've left the uh, the note that I did. So I started with Dave or Aspel Equator, uh, who's the current player, current club captain. Then went back to Terry. Uh, mm-hmm. Then went to Lasso, who um, was at Chelsea, uh, and then moved to Blackburn. Then went back to Chelsea. Hence how he played with Terry, and then he played with Kerry Dixon, then Walker, then Peter Bonetti, and then finally because we this is uh, and then Tom Doherty, 
or Doherty, is it? Tommy um, Doherty, yeah. Yeah, who uh, we d- I didn't realise at the time, and t- but um, was the man- went on to manage Wolves. He was an assistant player manager, so which mm. helped me really because the because we you were looking at how old the 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 date of the birth, weren't you? Yeah. Um, so that got me back to the I think nineteen twenty eight because he was mm-hmm. assistant manager. He was, he was the, one of the oldest players at the club, so it helped me get back really far. But they played together so- in the sixties. Okay, so when when was uh, when was Tommy Doherty's first season for Chelsea? He only, one, he only played he only season. played one season. So okay. he actually he actually Peter Bonetti played in the sixties, in the, as in sixty, but yeah. uh, Doherty played with him in I think sixty one or sixty two. So right. Do- Bonetti goes further back, but in terms of the players play that he played with. But they played together, and he was he was one of the oldest players because uh, Bottovich Benetti was quite young at the time. Uh, okay. So yes, yeah, so I got back to 1928. 1928. Um, so we got um, so uh, Liam Gregory, who's a Leeds fan, has uh, he sent me one for Leeds as well. So we started with Liam Cooper, who's playing for Leeds now, who played with Sam Byram in 2014. Mm-hmm. Sam Byram played with Danny Pugh in 2012. Danny Pugh played with Gary Kelly in 2004. Gary Kelly played with Mervyn Day in 1992. Mervyn Day played with Peter Lorimer in 1985. And Peter Lorimer played with Cliff Mason uh, in 1962. Who was, and Cliff Mason was born in 1929. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's quite a... But I found as well, and Liam found the same, uh, with both Wolves and Leeds, we've had tremendous financial problems where we've had to basically start again at some point. So he said yeah. getting past 2012 was a real struggle for him. Yeah, uh, yeah. The early... or the 80s was a struggle for Wolves because 1982, they went bankrupt for the first time and got rid of all their players. Yeah, It happened again then in the mid-80s. So that was quite tricky. Uh, you've it's had similar. one as well from, from I haven't got, I haven't got the Burn- I haven't got the Burnley one to hand. I will save that for next week because I there was I know we were doing three. So I thought, oh, I could get mm. one ready. As I said, he spent all day doing this yeah. as uh, off air to you and uh, to Alice. He, uh, I, you text me, I think, at 11. And he spent the past two hours researching this to make sure that he could do it but I know um Burnley and I think Chelsea was similar again in that at that period where it was especially Burnley mm. players would sign for them and then move on after a couple of years Chelsea the 80s was where I struggled um to get the link because you know the the, the key players at Chelsea at that period were only there for yeah. a couple of years and then moved on um but just trying to bridge the gap was is quite, was quite difficult but yeah I'll, I'll keep the Burnley one for for next week, just yeah. so, so then we have got one for next week, Tom. Because I know you're going to ask people to tweet us. Their, yeah, well, yeah, I, th- I think it's quite a it's quite a good game, and like I've I've tried already to look at the England cricket team, and I've got from yeah. the current day back to 1975 already in about three moves because it's much yeah. easier with cricket because once you're in the England team, you play and you could you play for a long time. So yeah, yeah. I've got back from Anderson to Tony Gregg already in the 1970s so that's quite a good one um but if you've any football team or any sports so you could have tennis players you could have roger federer who's played against uh maybe andre agassi that kind of or yeah, certainly yeah. somebody from that era federer would have played against so you could try and do that uh but if you do have any you can tweet them to us or email them to us at rouseroach.pod at gmail.com because i think it's probably longer than a tweet yeah don't worry as well if you don't know that they definitely play together because I found that was really difficult to try and yeah. find out. Uh, but if they were in the same squad in the same season, we'll, we'll assume that they did play together. So like yeah, Carla yeah. Kimi and Lee Naylor, they were both at the club definitely for three years together yeah. between 2003 and 2006. I'm assuming that they played at least one game together. The same with the, the two yeah. in the 80s for me as well. I'm not sure. Doherty was one. Doherty was one of me. He only played four games for Chelsea um, yeah. in that season because he was but a I suppose, player manager. Yeah, and I suppose Peter, would think, Peter Benetti would have been playing probably. Oh yeah, yeah, he'd have been playing because he was games. a keeper. That's that that was the what because I started with my first one was going to be Czech because I was like, well, yeah. that's going to get me back because he's playing now. He's going to get me back to you know Terry's era straight away. But Terry mm-hmm. obviously gets you back even further. You know, and Dave obviously the fantastic captain that he is is already uh, he, that's yeah. an easy one. So it doesn't really matter too much. I well, I am disappointed because you have named it. You have named it after. This after one of my favourite players or my favourite player, yeah, um, but and, and I couldn't get him in purely because <laughs> it would have wasted a move, and that was the uh, was Idiger Johnson. So um, I might try and get him in 
to one another one that we do later on. But um, well, I think that that could be a challenge that we use uh, once because obviously you can't just do wolves once, but you could say yeah. right, use wolves, but you have to include Robbie Keane or somebody like, somebody from quite a while ago that you have to go get, get back yeah, yeah, to yeah. that way. I think that's I think it's an excellent game, Billy. I think it's one another feature that deserves a great it's be, stink. It'll be uh, it'll be trending on uh, Twitter. Very soon, obviously, because they it, it was all the rave at the start of lockdown was these these teams where you could mm. only pick one player from each like from each team or something like that in the Premier League or something like that. This is obviously going to be the new trend, Tom. We're gonna yeah, Jamie, your mate Jamie Car- uh, Carrick is gonna gonna get get it and then it's gonna blow up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. So, uh, oh, well, and just quickly, the reason why it's called the Ida Johnson game. Did you get it, Billy? Do you know why it's called the Ida Johnson game? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well because he famously got substituted uh well, on for oh, yeah, his dad his, uh, yeah so yeah, i was yeah. trying to think of the longest gaps between so like he well, his dad would have been like i don't know 40 at the time and he would have been 16 uh that sort of gap of player yeah, yeah. and how how far back we can go by doing that um well it was it was similar to the game that we you know we used to play where it would be a case of I'd give you clues of they've played with this person and this person and this person yeah, yeah. and Ida Johnson has played with quite a few you know notable players so I thought oh is mm. it that or is it something different but no yeah that's famously you know be quite interesting to find about how many players if you went gen- generations how many have played with yeah. their siblings and stuff like that so but yeah yeah good 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 right moving on then to the first uh, of our Main features and my favourite no. thing. Football. Everton, Manchester United, Leeds United, the reason for United, West Bromwich, which such such <laughs> an hot for space. Leeds United City. Well, Billy, it's been a sad <laughs> week. For uh, football managers, we've had the first sacking in the Premier League. Uh, Slavin yeah. Bilic gone, and uh, relegation avoider Sam Allardyce, who's a Wolves fan, has gone to Albion. So they will be getting relegated because Agent Sam he wants them. Yeah. He's a Wolves fan. Uh, has he ever but, been relegated? Has he? Ever, sorry, Tom. Has he ever been relegated? Uh, I don't. I, I don't know if he I definitely has because he was always successful at Bolton. He kept them up all the time. Yeah, and then. He's been brought in to avoid relegation with West Ham, Palace. Uh, oh no, he didn't. He wasn't brought in to avoid relegation, was he? With West Ham, he was in the Championship with West Ham. But then yeah. Palace, he's avoided relegation. Sunderland, he managed to do it, didn't he? Um, Newcastle, I think that they. He was with them in that season that they got relegated, but I think he was sacked before they were actually relegated. Yeah. Uh, was it? Or was yeah. it? Um, yeah, I think you're right there. I'm done. Well, uh, was, was it? Because Shearer, Shearer got, took over, wasn't it? It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't Kinnear or. Um, I think it might have been actually. I think it might have been the season think, before that big sound. Or Keegan was, it, or did, was it Keegan when he did Keegan go back? I don't know. Keegan anyway, we're at some point. Yeah, we're, anyway, uh, we're not talking about Sam Allardyce anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, I've only just well, it was Billy's idea actually to talk yeah. about this uh, particular manager. Uh, I think it was announced this morning that Ian Holloway has quit. Resigned, which is very, very rare in football nowadays. So I imagine that there's some other meanings behind it as well. Other, I know that he's got, um, is it two deaf daughters that he's got? He's, yeah, I think uh, so. So he's got, you're right there. You know, he's got, uh, you know, home life as well, which has been quite uh, publicised. So perhaps it could be something to do with that, or I don't even know how Grimsby are doing in the league. Are they doing so, something? Something uh, I, I know that I think they're subject to a takeover. So I think it's something to do oh, with okay. the potential board. I think he's had a falling out with the board or something like that. Um, but but, uh, but yeah, just quickly to go back to Alalas, he has never been relegated. I've just, I've just looked it up. Um, so yeah, you are right there. Thank you, um, Billy. But yeah, sorry, so, no worry. On the so, finger on the pulse. Yeah, well then. So the uh, Sky Sports meme of the week is a classic. From Ian Holloway. Here we go. We'll always get sides having a go and then come back and, and score two good goals after that. Yeah, I have said it before, you know, um, a win's a win. Um, and put it in gentleman's terms, if you go out on a night and you're looking for a young lady and you pull one, you know, that's it. Some some weeks they're good looking and some weeks they're not the best. And, and <laughs> our performance today would have been not the best looking. 
um, bird, but at least we'd have gone home in a taxi with <laughs> <room>. her. <laughs> If that makes any sense, you know. <laughs> None at all, but it sounds great. It certainly does. She wasn't the best-looking lady we ended up taking home, but she was very pleasant, very nice, and all. Thanks very much. Let's have a coffee. <laughs> we might have to come back to you on that point a bit later in the season. Anyway, um, what about the third goal? Paul Furlong, great strike from the free kick. You know you got options from those free kicks. We knew there was going to be a fight on. We knew there was going to be a fight on. I don't mean any disrespect for that from to my good lady because I never go out on the pool. <laughs> I only try to to make you understand what it's like, you know. A win is a bird and we take her own at the end of the day. We want a better looking one than that if we can, but if not, we'll take her own anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Brilliant. <laughs> I was it also is. looking for the one where he says um, about his strikers, they could have been put into a barrel of tits and they'd have come out sucking their thumb. <laughs> he is uh, he is one of those characters which, uh, you know, at his time at Blackpool as well, he was he was great, mm. wasn't he? Um, it's obviously being in the Premier League. And it's it's one of those things where you're sad to see, you know, any any person, you know, especially in football, lose their job. Um, you know, Watford in particular, uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 hit, hit headlines again. Have you seen what Troy Deeney said about that? No, no. So he's been linked with the uh, with being becoming the player manager, and oh. uh, he's come out and said, "Why, why on earth would I do something like that? I'd be sacked within five months." <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, and that's that's a club captain saying that. But yeah, oh. the, you know, there's there's characters, you know, Ian Holloway, Warnock, you know, we've spoken about before, mm. who just make you laugh Mourinho in particular as well but yeah go on There's one other one as well who I watched quite a few clips of him yesterday I was just in the mood for a little bit of Mike Dean uh, <laughs> yeah because he, he's got a lot of stick from Wolves fans recently because we uh, we, we, we fell foul of some of his decisions against Aston Villa um, and he sort of lost control of the game a little bit so but aside from his actual refereeing He's added a bit of fun to some of the games that he's uh, refereed in the yeah. past. There's that famous clip of him celebrating a Spurs goal after he played yeah, an yeah. advantage, uh, or the way that he gives his penalties in a very dramatic way, uh, or his no-luck yellow cards. That's yeah, the yeah. kind of thing that's missing from football at the minute. We've spoken a bit in the past about it's so uh, it's taken so seriously all the time, and like yeah. the level of detail that the VAR goes into, or the analysis before and after the games by Neville and Carragher. There's no fun in football so much anymore, and that's yeah. that's what Mike Dean's trying to do. Well, that actually leads on quite pretty well, Tom, because Nigel um, Nigel Owens is retired from mm. refereeing football, and he I, he was another one I was going to recommend potentially for me of the week because obviously him and his antics on the pitch, uh, you know, similar to Mike Dean, you know, he's going to be missed, especially in, well, he's retired from international football, uh, football rugby, rugby, yeah, yeah, um, but he's still going to be doing you know uh, club club rugby and stuff so obviously you'll still be able to get the the antics that he does you know famously I think there was one in particular where a ball boy threw the ball onto the pitch and it hit it hit um, Owens in in the head and he just turned mm. around walked off and, and then gave this you know jokingly gave this ball boy uh, a yellow card and sinned yeah. him and told him he had to go off and stuff so it, you know, like you say it needs you know they're mm. not that they're bigger than the sport but it brings obviously that attention to the sport and you know you're always looking oh what what antics are they going to be up to today and stuff and it's an extra thing to look at yeah and even in his personal life Nigel Owens likes a bit of a laugh because he's yeah. uh he's gay he's probably the I think probably the only gay rugby referee or openly gay yeah. rugby referee at international level certainly and he came out on telly uh on the, uh, what's the program called with Jonathan Edwards that he has uh the rugby sort of program on S4C Scorio no Scorio um, I, I think it's no I think it's called Jonathan I think it's just called yeah, yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan. Like a, yeah so he yeah, Jonathan. Uh, this was years ago now he had a, a wardrobe on uh, the <laughs> on the set and Nigel yeah. Owens Emerge from this wardrobe with uh, I'm coming out, <laughs> or, 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 uh, or I am what I am. I think it was, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Came out to, which you know, to, it's sort of. I imagine if you were a you know, a young gay person watching that and you think, Oh, you know, I am what I am, who, who cares? I'll come out like that, and uh, especially at the time, yeah. I mean, this, I don't know when it was, it would have been 2000, and two, it was early 2000s. Yeah, I was going to say it's nearly 20 years ago now that he did that. And it's uh, breaking down barriers. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but I know that there's a lot of American people who, who listen to this podcast now. Nearly half our listeners are actually from America. So I would yeah. recommend 
watching videos of Mike Dean refereeing or having a look at Nigel Owens because some of the way he's this tiny little bloke, Nigel Owens, telling off these enormous rugby players. Yeah. It's very, very funny to watch. These thugs. Uh, it, yeah. is, it is good. It is good. But anyway, Tom. Let's move on. What's the next? The what's the next? What's the next thing you're gonna play for us? It's the. <laughs> That's as much as we can play of that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the commentary conundrum. Who are you? <laughs> so I'll play you the uh, the existing That's... one, which has yeah. finally been guessed. Here yeah. it is. So this was put on Twitter and it was guessed correctly by somebody called Dan on Twitter. I'll just find out their name. Uh, and I know he... um, my dad, he, uh, I played it for him because uh, he doesn't understand how technology works um, <laughs> and, and can't figure out how to get the podcast to load onto his phone. Um, so I yeah. played him the clip and within 30 seconds, he guessed it correctly. Mm. But then he did He did then think, oh, was it um, Liverpool winning the Champions League or Drogba scoring his header in the mm. Champions League. My mum, would quite hilariously, guessed the Cricket World Cup uh, from this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and then she guessed Leicester winning the league. But uh, similar to Dan, uh, he guessed it that it was uh, the famous goal in the Man City derby where Rooney scored an overhead kick, I think, to win the game. I think it was the yeah. winner in the game. Um, and it, it is, is I thought, yeah, I was, I was quite shocked that um, you didn't get it straight away, and you even admitted to me, Tom, that you yeah. hadn't you hadn't guessed it because it's it is quite it's overplayed, you know. It's especially like advertising for Sky Sports mm. and things like that because your your favourite commentator um, mm. is the one commentating in the in the clip, um, and it's obviously you know played all the time for that. But yeah, so um, well done to Dan and my dad for uh, yeah. for getting that. Uh, we've got a new one now for this week. We, I did have two set up, and I had sent you one, but forgot to clip the end off where <laughs> where the name says so we've gone with option b um which is tom's gonna play for us now she's this one i'm trying to play it louder okay i'll uh I'll put that up on Twitter separately, I think, but just because of the, the sound is so quiet on that one. Uh, yeah. But I'll put it up separately. So if you do know, then reply to the tweet that you see on our podcast channel. Because so, what we want, what we want is the the clip that they're referring to. What are they referring to that happened a year ago to that clip? If that makes sense, okay. or you know, you should be able to guess. You know, there's a famous a famous thing and which happens as a result of that. But yeah, you should be yeah. able to get it. People will get it, hopefully. So ne let's move on to the next feature. And it's time for Billy Roach's poll. Now, controversially, Billy, I don't know if you've seen Twitter this morning. I don't know if you've I seen have, it. and I am quite annoyed. <laughs> 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 but in fairness, in, in fairness, I would have probably done a poll like that had we not decided to do the poll that we originally did, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so Billy the, the poll that we did. And uh, that I sent out initially was should we continue doing the poll, um, mm. which had three votes uh, <laughs> in total. Um, but the poll answer was yes. However, we did decide that potentially we were going to um, end the poll this. Well, not this week. Next week will be the final poll. However, Tom has gone rogue and uh, has set up another poll, which I would have probably done considering mm. this time of year and i think it probably does skewer the uh results slightly because obviously people are going to be voting on that more so than what we normally do but go on tom you can you can share your poll this week so uh everybody gather around and look at my poll uh so i simply four words i said best part of christmas yeah. and the options were presents food booze or telly and so far, we've had as many as 13, one, three, 13 <laughs> votes. 8% uh, of people have gone for presents. Oh, sorry, 0% of people have gone for telly, which I think is telling yeah. at the minute, because yeah. it used to, when we were young, Only Fools and Horses Christmas special, everybody used to watch. 
Uh, yeah. There'd be special episodes of The Vicar of Dibley, <laughs> all yeah. sorts of. Well, it's, I think as well, programs. it's it's the shift now to more. You know, the like you can watch anything you want with these mm. streaming services, um, and other various means. Um, yeah. Whenever you want, and I think more people now watch less live telly than they used to, if that makes sense. Whereas, yeah. and going back, you know, even to back to when we were kids, it had been there was four channels. Yeah, um, and that was it and stuff. But go on, Tom. Sorry, I've hijacked your. Yeah, there. so well, and also, also as well, this year probably more so than any other year, they because all the Christmas specials are recorded in the summer, aren't they? Which and yeah. everything's been affected by COVID, so I don't think that that's helped Christmas telly. Yeah. Uh, so nobody looks forward to Chris uh, Christmas television. Only eight percent of people actually look forward to presents, which I think is probably our demographic because if you're below 13 you probably look forward yeah. to christmas presents or 15 maybe 15 16 you're probably still excited for presents <laughs> however tom you... you're, they are, you're asking to pick between one or two uh, you know one or four things so if you said if there mm. was a, you could pick for two i think that would probably be the second vote if that makes well, sense. well well you say that but it didn't finish in second place billy which you would imagine uh, okay that would that would be the case so in second place was booze but only with 15 percent Again, yeah. with a certain demographic, you know, if you yeah, obviously but... asked kids, they wouldn't obviously vote for that. It, well, yeah, <laughs> so you've got the same argument. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but then overwhelming first place. Yeah. Not enough to win a US election, though. No. <laughs> with 77% of votes is food. And that's the thing because, this is my thinking, on our Twitter, I think we follow quite a lot of American uh, channels as well. Not saying yeah. that they're into their food more, because I think... I mean, I went, to, I went to Merry Hill. <laughs> I went to Merry Hill Shopping Centre the other day, and let me tell you, British people have catch have caught up with <laughs> with Americans. <laughs> Into, well, that was a, when we were younger. That was a big thing. It was like Americans were all obese. Well, actually, yeah. now it's the same here. It's got to be the yeah, same yeah. here. But anyway, I think Americans are less bigger drinkers than us. Yes. I think. I think we indulge a lot more in alcohol, particularly mm. around Christmas. So I think that's probably why. Our American contingent of followers on Twitter have gone for food. So 77% of votes have been food, 15 booze. Maybe they didn't even understand what booze meant, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, and then 8% present, 0% telly. So there you go. So food is the overwhelming winner. But Billy, this year for me is the first year of being a vegetarian at Christmas time. So it's <laughs> going to be very, very different for me. Uh, I've even, uh, in the last couple of days, really toyed with the idea of trying veganism for january because mm. they have yeah. vegan veganuary or whatever it is for is a like a thing that no tries to encourage people to try it for for a month um but we've tried um uh aqua what's it called aqua the fake egg. water no oh, no no, no, no. It's, <laughs> I, I can't remember the i can't remember the word for it but it's aqua something and it's fake egg and we tried yeah. yesterday uh I think it was supposed to be like, um, cre- uh, what's it called? Deep fried chicken, but with yeah. broccoli. Yeah. So ba- battered broccoli, basically. And uh, it was, it, t- <laughs> it tasted as good as I probably could have made normal batter yeah. with egg and whatever, but it was, it was fine. And, you know, helping out the animals, man. Yeah. Not killing, not milking them to death and not, uh, you know, the exploiting their eggs. Is, the hips that there is, Tom Rouse. Yeah, I do feel like I'm becoming more and more of a hipster every day. Yeah. I've, I've listened to vinyls, and now I don't eat milk or stop. Just, just I can, put yeah. stop. <laughs> I can't. I can't have. I can't have a Christmas without eating chocolate and cheese, though. So that's. I can't have a vegan Christmas. So there's still going to be, but I'm not looking forward to not having pigs and blankets. To be honest, yeah, that, I think that's probably what the next poll should be: is what is the best part of. Christmas. Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner. Because I know controversially, uh, we have because we are northern, is my family. We have mm. Yorkshire puddings with our Christmas Christmas dinner. Um, mm. regardless, I know I think it's quite with beef, I think um it is quite acceptable, I think normally. Whereas oh, I got, have it got have regardless. Yeah. Regardless, I have um Yorkshire puddings with every roast dinner, Christmas dinner, mm. anything along those lines. Um so yeah, it, I know uh, we've had to get I think a bag each. For Yorkshire puddings because wow. the amount that we normally have, and then so I have don't, my own. You don't make them. You don't make them fresh then. 
So sometimes we do, but because of, as we've spoken previously on the podcast about, I don't know if we spoke about it on the podcast, but the pl- our Christmas plans have changed. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I haven't, uh, I'm not the best at making Yorkshire puddings from scratch, hence why we had frozen ones in the fridge, <laughs> freezer, uh, ready for me to make this Christmas dinner. So, um, oh, so yeah. So but you, you were planning to have a Christmas yeah. completely by yourself and make your own Christmas dinner. Yeah, well, me and my brother, me and my brother would have uh, would have ended up, yeah, because uh, yeah. that, that that would have been what it is. Um, and I normally have a whole packet of pigs and blankets to myself. Uh, wow. So uh, yeah, that's a it's it, it's a, it's a must. It is a must and stuff. So yeah, well, probably that'll probably be next week's poll potentially or something like that. And it'll be the well, yeah. it'll be the final one that I put out. Tom now might hijack it, and it might we'll just edit yeah. the edit this thing to have Tom's poll um, instead <laughs> and it's of time for poll. Tom's poll. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. There we are. Good. Well okay. done, Tom. <laughs> okay, and time for the last feature of Denmark the week. government are allowing sex with domestic animals during Malcolm lockdown. Malcolm Pike left a address at where he was the burning. Brazilian where Chico Rodriguez has stuffed ten thousand. Government. Down the government are banning babies to own businesses. A Dutch football team is not allowed to be sponsored by sex toys. A three-year-old has been is swept off, off by a kite. Bears. It's time for Billy Eve It or Not. You are fake news. Here is the current incumbent of the uh, President of America job. Um, <laughs> still thinks he's going to win, despite everybody now, uh, even he's like... not leaving. He's not leaving. No, we're going to have to go another White House to, to try and lure <laughs> him into that and go, look, this. we're going to move you into this one just so you can yeah. pretend, carry on pretending. Oh, God. Can you imagine... <laughs> Being American, I mean, the, if you are American, please let us know how you feel, <laughs> because yeah, I would be. It was just embarrassing though, because well, even Tom, obviously, but the thing is, you're saying that, but you look at the amount of people who voted for him. We don't know what demographic our mm. listeners in America are oh, from. Yeah, they, they could, could be, be it could be either or. But on that note, Tom, for the people who are um, watching on YouTube, would you like to show everyone uh, your Christmas present? Oh, I yes. haven't got mine before you ask ask me to show oh, was... mine. I was very so on Saturday morning. I'd been out to play football, and I came back to receive a parcel through the post. And I thought I haven't ordered anything. I don't think, and uh, it was very very pleasing to uh, to receive this <laughs> the kids Trump uh, 2021 uh, uh, calendar, and it's it's just a joy. I'll just I think I'll just show, I would, I would I'll say hold it, Tom, hold it, Tom, because I think we should they should could become a feature now because okay. you're showing each month what the okay. picture is and we could discuss it each month. So obviously this is the cover, uh, yeah. and obviously so now those of you who when I opened the present, I there was only one person I thought could have bought that for me. Uh, <laughs> so I was uh, I was delighted, and then I, I think there's a card. Oh, it was not on the back of this. There's a card with the that showed you the other possible um options so there was an ian yeah. beale calendar yeah. there might have been a putin one maybe i think as there, well. there was a boris there was a boris one as well i think yeah um but i thought to go with believe it or not um yeah, yeah. i thought it, it suits you and obviously your admiration for him in particular yes. um, i think it's so, very, yeah. very very funny very <laughs> funny indeed so but anyway moving on we, these are the I've got this, the three stories, Tom, and they all have a uh, a similar theme for you uh, for you today. So uh, the headlines are. Uh, let me just scroll to make sure that I get them all together. Uh, so, giant inflatable Santa breaks free to hold up traffic. Hmm. Pot noodle to release Christmas dinner special. <laughs> and. Okay. Hang on. Finally, because there we go. It's chocolate eruption blocks. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate eruption causes uh, fiber grade to close road. Oh, <laughs> that was a disappointing end to that story. Uh, I thought it was yeah. going to be a lot more exciting. Yeah. Right. So uh, there's two stories that are very similar. Yeah. Here, so basically, something happens and traffic is held up, uh, or the fire brigades are called. So, let's start with the giant inflatable Santa then that held up the traffic. Where did this take place? Uh, it took place on. Uh, uh, where is it now? It's on an A road. I know that much. Oh, in in Britain. 
Yeah, it's in Britain. It took place in Britain. Uh, oh, it's on a sorry, it's on a, a B the B one nine eight. Where's that? <laughs> Cromwell Road. Okay, uh, okay. where's that? <laughs> <laughs> Cambridgeshire. Okay. My knowledge of B roads is not what it used to be. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so was this a private Santa, or was it part of a display of some kind, or or what? Uh, it broke free from its moorings and drifted onto the road. Uh, I, the location of which it had come from a uh, a good front garden from a well, from okay, a nearby so, from yeah. a nearby house. Um, it was fa- found by a taxi driver uh, who was who has taken the photo to you know to upload and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was that the 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 quote that was is that they were stuck in a lengthy ho ho hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Billy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Why did, so how big was it then that they couldn't move out of the road? Because sure, if it blew into the road, it can't be that that enormous to push out the way. Uh, it was quite large. Uh, I haven't. I don't think I've got a, a size for it, but it was one of those big giant. You know, the, the word is giant inflatable yeah. Santa. So you have can you imagine. A, it's, have you got a picture there? Could you get, guess at how? Uh, big it I is? can't. I can't. Uh, I can't provide a, a photo. I'm afraid, Thomas. Because it's made up. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, uh, right then, the pot noodle Christmas special. I can't believe this doesn't already exist. Tell me about um, this. What what's the flavour? So it's it's set to be relaunched. Uh, oh, it's okay. Christmas. It's a Christmas dinner which was released in 2010. So 10 mm-hmm. years to the 10 years to the year. They've they're going to re well, they've re released it. Um, back into the back into society to help lift the spirits. I think is what they're. They're trying to do um so yeah it's a christmas dinner flavor which is obviously out for a limited time okay i, I don't think i don't think there's much more i can no i I, be, I do believe that story as well I've, I've got a very very shady memory of somebody in university having one once maybe or no it would have been before i don't know yeah we would have been at university christmas 2010 it was probably you tom no i don't no, well maybe <laughs> i don't think i oh <laughs> there was a point in our first year, where remember Tesco used to do three P noodles? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. So that's what I was eating. So I wouldn't have pushed the boat out for a pound worth of uh, pot, pot noodle. noodle. But yeah, yeah, three P noodles. Do you remember that? Oh my yeah. god! Times a different one then. So what, the only thing I want to know is what color the pot is for the pot noodle. You could probably guess, Tom. Oh, it's either going to be green or red. It's red with a it's Christmas red. tree on it. With red, okay. with red with a Christmas tree and a cracker on it. Oh, talking of uh, special Christmas uh, pictures, what do you think of our little thumbnail for the podcast this I did. These couple of weeks? Uh, I did. I did say oh, we're obviously I'm overcompensating for something. Uh, it's not the size. I just wanted to say, Tom, it's not the size of uh, your hat that that matters. <laughs> it's what's inside. But yeah, it's quite. I think it's what's inside that counts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I think. <laughs> In order to cover my uh, my big ears, anyway, I need a hat that big, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, that cost me ninety nine p to buy the picture of that hat because on uh, Canva, I thought it'd be a nice little Christmas gift for you to give you give us a little hat for, <laughs> for them. Oh, on a similar note, before I go on to the final one, have you uh, have you re- have we re recorded now our uh, advert uh, at the start? Uh, no, I st- no, I, st- <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Still, I might do that today. Might, might do it later today. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, the final, the final, the final. everybody. Happy yeah. here. The final, um, the final story comes from Germany. Oh, uh, hence, hence why the probably the uh, lack of enthusiastic headline, uh, as it were. <laughs> you just told us. The fact. <laughs> yeah, you just got straight to the point. Um, basically, the it was a, a land of honey, milk, and honey was a vicious brown mess in <laughs> Westerson on Monday evening, where a delivery tank overflowed, and the. the uh, the chocolate spilled out all over the road and hardened, uh, or started to harden. So the uh, the fire brigade got called out and found it very difficult uh, because once it started to harden, they were obviously trying to get rid of mm. it. They were about to break it up and all this stuff. Um, they had to eat the, their way out. Eat their way out. The armed forces were called shortly after <laughs> as well. Um, so, you know, all the employees in Russia. So yeah, it was. They had to have blow torches and everything to help um, mm. to melt the chocolate. Um, but no one was hurt or anything like that. But it was just a massive, uh, massive conundrum. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. 
<laughs> I, th- I think that, uh, so my gut is that the chocolate eruption is fake uh, just because it sounds so ridiculous. I don't think it could have been that cold for the chocolate to have totally frozen um, on the road. Although I suppose it's possible, but I think they probably keep it in a way that it can't melt in case of that kind of accident. Uh, the inflatable Santa sounds very plausible. And the fact that you were able to tell me that the exact road that it was on, Cromwell Road in Cambridgeshire, which could well or not, <laughs> it could be a road or not. It sounds plausible. <laughs> so, and the pot noodle one, I think it's, I think that's true. I think the pot noodle would create a Christmas dinner flavour special. So I think I'm going to go for the chocolate eruption being fake. It's also very similar to the, one of the first ones that we ever had was about chocolates, yeah, chocolate. chocolate snow in yeah, Switzerland. Snow. Yeah. So I, I'm going to go for that one being fake. Uh, so the <sighs> there's probably a little, uh, oh, little God, thing I easy, have told you so they're all fake. I picked, <laughs> I picked, I picked, I picked three Christmas stories that have, have have happened over the last couple of years. Um, so in 2018, uh, this inflatable Santa, which I can now show you a photo of, because I was worried that if I showed you a photo of this, you would have asked to see seen a photo of the other options, which is why I said no to that one. So, but you obviously got that one right. So uh, that happened in 2018. Uh, there's a giant Santa. I, I think I can. Sh- I can't. Um, oh, I can. I can share my screen. Uh, so there you are, Tom. Oh wow. There's, I think there's even a video if I can find it. Oh no. Or maybe it is that if I click on that. No. No. But yeah. So there's the the Santa. Um, yeah, and it that was is filmed. enormous for somebody's front garden. That is yeah, gargantuan. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is uh, rather rather large. Oh, I think it was on, I know where the other video is. Uh, but then the chocolate story is true. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that happened. I'm just trying to find the... That happened in 2018 as well. Um, and again, but the article is written in German. So I've had to use Google Translate <laughs> in order to get it. And hence why the, hence why the headline isn't brilliant is because it's obviously yeah. written in German. And then I wow. it's, it's been translated with Google Translate to this useless headline um but the pot noodle isn't ha- hasn't the christmas pot noodle hasn't made a, as a hasn't re- been re-released it did come out in but 2010. it did exist it did exist in 2010 uh and it i was like oh this will be perfect for one for it to be re-released 10 years on oh, and it'll uh. kazump to so um so yeah and so yeah tom i've reclaimed i thought you potentially could have i thought it was quite difficult um for you mm. to get because they were all obviously really plausible um especially like you say if you Again, if you knew that the uh, pot noodle, I think it's called the pot Noel Noel doodle. Oh, I think uh, they've put Noel instead of new, noodle as well. Um, it was the name of it. But yeah, uh, they were they were the stories that I uh, had for you this week. I've already started on next week's ones because there's been a couple oh, wow. of really good ones uh, that have been in the paper recently. But I thought we'll keep it Christmas themed this this yeah. week, and then next next week it'll be. Uh, there are some really good ones I've already got lined Happy up. Happy so, New yeah. Year. Okay, very good, Billy. Well done. You got me. So oh, yeah. uh, we've got one go... more feature. We've got one more oh. feature. You've probably forgotten about it again. I've forgotten about it. I don't know if I've got a good idea. You know, uh, your your podcast ideas. ideas. You've run out let of ideas. Just, let me just have a look at my little notebook on, the, on, on here your now. Phone. Um, I mean, after last week's idea, um, I don't think you can ever top that with your uh, dictators. Dictators, yeah. Uh, oh, terrible podcast ideas. Here we go. Uh, so we've I've been through the 2011 12 Premier League season rewatch, yeah. Uh, dictator with an exclamation mark at the end. We've been through that one. Chess moves, yeah. um, done that. And then we, well, you actually brought this one up as, as an idea, but board game play along that's what yeah. I had. Sist cast, we've discussed that one yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. the only one I've got left. Is a controversial one. Um, oh God! <laughs> but it's, uh, I think, it, <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> it's pedo, <laughs> pedo hunters getting drunk <laughs> because <laughs> <What? laughs> there's a podcast um, which I think is by Richard Herring's wife. So uh, let me just find the actual podcast where this came from. It's called something like. Murder, something to do with murder, murder getting something to do with 
murder hunters getting drunk. Well, they have. Um, well, uh, got, drunk. Um, so it's called drunk women solving crime, right? And it's okay. uh, drunk women solving crime is a true podcast with a twist of lime. So I thought that I take that and I take it. I don't, you know, crime is a big thing on the uh, of podcasts, but they it tends to be murders or serial killers or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's not there's not enough pedo catching on uh, podcasts, <laughs> but there's there's lots oh of very famous God. lots of very famous pedo uh, hunter Facebook uh, channels and YouTube channels that are well. There's a very, massive very funny. There's a massive. Um, I think I'm. I might be wrong. I don't know if it's still about, but there was a TV program in America, mm. which obviously you know they, they I know they have this the catfishing like program with like, but they they had one for, that they would go out and try and catch these these pedophiles. Mm. Or, you know, it was this the same guy, it would be the same host, and he'd turn up in this house where where they were expecting to obviously meet this <laughs> child. Um, oh, and, this, yeah, yeah. The, and then they get caught and stuff and they'd be like shitting themselves because obviously they'd be like oh no it's Tom Rouse the pedo catcher <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah but uh, but and they do um, like, drunk history didn't they on Dave mm. I think that was that was popular a couple of years ago where they yeah. had famous celebrities getting drunk and telling historical stories and obviously Tommy you had that book was it last year or it started the year you had this book where you had, we're going through all these history and reading about we could just get you smashed and you could retell the stories and stuff um, it won't yeah. take a lot um, yeah. but yeah it's obviously quite a controversial one Tom but yeah um, well, it, but, I, I mean, it, it'd, it'd be I'd quite just, funny it'd be quite funny for somebody to get really really drunk and then try and catch a pedophile <laughs> or retell or just retell their story I think retelling yeah. their story uh, yeah, would yeah, be yeah. would be a funny thing to do so yeah, yeah. well done Tom. there was a, there was a, an indie podcast that I've seen and is because I've now followed lots and lots of indie podcasts just like we are on their yeah. Twitter and there's one called uh, history told by idiots or something like that which I thought of all the podcast titles that I've seen that's one of the only ones that I'd really want to uh, to listen to, so I might try and dabble with that one. Yeah, but yeah, we I mean, we could add a feature into our podcast be, yes. to that, perhaps. Yeah, that would yeah. definitely be something that we could do. Um, <laughs> not that we're both, not that we're both, you know, secondary school teachers, formerly primary school teachers, who and would have had to have taught history at one point. Um, yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. Um, but I I think we've only got the recommendation left, Tom. Now and that's it. Something else that I've missed. Um, no, that's I think that's all all the features for today, Billy. That's all. Yeah. So, um, I mind. It's my turn. I think to recommend something. Yeah, and I've. Uh, well, we actually haven't spoken about one thing, and this is linked to that thing. And Tom, I know we can't talk about it because we're not supposed to talk about it, because mm-hmm. uh, it's part of said film. Um, is one of the oh, rules, yeah. is that you're not allowed to talk about it. So, Tom, do you want to do you want to mention um, that you've obviously watched you've watched one of the films that I recommended. With Brad yeah. Pitt in it, uh, I can't remember the name of the other actor. Who, uh, Edward Norton. Edward Norton. Did you enjoy the film, Tom? Well, Billy, it's funny you should ask <laughs> because I've tried to watch this film a number of times. I think Dan had it in university and lent it to me, yeah. and I just I kept falling asleep in it, which, as we mentioned previously, was ironic. The same thing happened again so a, <laughs> for about probably half an hour to forty minutes of the film. I, I slept through, so there's a bit. Probably in what you describe as the second act, I yeah. fell asleep. So once, um, once the the club was established, yeah, uh, there was a little bit where I slept through, and I, but I don't think I missed any key parts of the film. At I don't, all, yeah, in that it, dep- bit. it depends on the point that you watched. Yeah, yeah, but the I d- I did enjoy it in a way. It wasn't as yeah. um, I don't know. Perhaps because you've watched it so many times, or perhaps because you you've read the book as well. I read the book really as well. Love it. I I didn't. I I, I enjoyed it. A, yeah. You know, for a film, I, it was yeah. quite good. But then there's a few bits that I thought, well, like I don't want to spoil the end of it, but I didn't yeah, understand yeah. how he still survived at the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, I so thought that was really annoying. So in the um in the book, the ending is different. Right. So the ending is different in the book. Um, so, and I think when I read the book, it, it makes the ending, it, which happens in the film, you understand the ending a bit more because it is it is different um, mm. in the book. So read the book, Tom. Then 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 okay. all your all your answers will be solved. So 
on the back of that, I've... Um, By the I, way, that was Fight Club that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Who <laughs> didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, so... And the first rule of Fight Club is you are not allowed to talk about it. And it's yeah, so just same, broken it. And the, and the second rule is as well. Um, but I've, uh, I've got another film uh, to recommend that you watch, Tom. Um, oh, I've just I've just purchased uh, Now TV. There are obviously other streaming source, sources available. Mm-hmm. And gone through... They have, a, they have a list of the best films of 2020. And one of them was the the Good Liar, is the name of the film, okay. which has got. Uh, I'm just going to double check that I get these right because I normally always get these two actors wrong. Um, so I just want to make sure that I get them right. And it stars Helen Mirren and Ian McKellen. Okay. Uh, uh, Ian McKellen, obviously famous for playing Gandalf, um, mm-hmm. and uh, so he, they star in the film, and it's it's about. Um, it's really good. It's about uh, these two elderly. This it, the premise is going to sound awful, and I'm just looking on IMDb to see if it's any if it explains it any better. So I will read the IMDb the uh, okay. that synopsis rather than the synopsis that I would have given, which is two old people go on a date and then shit goes down. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so it's a consummate con man. Ron Courtenay has set his sights on his latest mark the recently widowed Betty McLeish worth millions. But this time, what should have been a simple swindle escalates into a cat and mouse game with the ult- with ultimate stakes. Um, so Ron Courtenay is played by Ian McKellen and Betty McLeish is played by Helen Mirren. And it is it's very good. Um, you know, there's you know there's a twist involved and all this mm. stuff as you expect in most films like this and stuff. And you're always trying to guess what it is and things. But yeah, it's uh, I'd recommend, you know, they're two, you know, very highly acclaimed actors. Yeah. Um, it must be. Uh... Um, it's done really well. It's, it's um, you know, it's, it's, it's got a 6.6 on IMDb, uh, which mm. obviously, but it isn't, you know, I think a lot of things right nowadays get sh- terrible scores and stuff. But yeah, there's, yeah. It's, it's quite good, you know, and it's worth the watch. It's something different to watching the Christmas films. Obviously, my other recommendation, Tom, um, spoiler for those of you who thought ahead of uh, the Christmas quiz that comes out now on Saturday, is I. Uh, Die Hard. There is a question on Die Hard. Tom has mm-hmm. never seen Die Hard. <laughs> that that is also on the list of things for you to watch. So yeah, they're my two recommendations for you this week, Tom. Yeah. So that well, and that would be my recommendation is that look out for Boxing Day because there is a special bonus Christmas episode of Absolute Scenes with a special guest host Harry Mansell, where we, me and Billy quiz ourselves to oblivion. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll uh, we're gonna just finish off with a final bit of. Christmas ness that I uh, I recorded myself uh, yesterday. I uh, thought I'd, I'd do a nice little Christmas treat, Billy. Uh, so I've sung you um, a Christmas song. For those of you at home, Brilliant. have a lovely Christmas, and uh, I hope you all your dreams, your Christmas wishes come true. And um, that oh, hang on, uh, hang on, I don't think I'm doing it right because oh yeah. You yeah, shared, you I am sharing my sound. I am sharing now my sound. Are. So now you are. Yeah. So <clears throat> I hope that all your Christmas wishes come true. That you get all your presents that you want, and that you have a safe Christmas in whichever tier that you're in, and that you, um, if if you are spending Christmas by yourself, then hopefully we've provided some solace and some entertainment and some company for you on this uh, very dif- different Christmas day. So. Uh, here it is, Billy. I'd just like you to, just to ask you to put yourself on mute just while I uh, just play this song for you. Oh, holy night. Stars are Brightly shining It is the night Of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world In sin and error pine Till he appeared and this so bells it's worth 
a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Happy Christmas, everybody. You know, we hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. Bye-bye. That was fantastic. Bye. <laughs>